Today, Elon Musk cleans house at Twitter. Disney debuts their first plus-sized heroine that everyone's asking for, except by that I mean nobody's asking for, and Fox called the Arizona gubernatorial race before the polls even opened. We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. Happy Friday. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and I am uh, joined today by very, very lovely guests that I'm going to tell you about in a second. But first, I want to thank uh, Healthy Cell. Today's episode is brought to you by Healthy Cell. They've got a ton of supplements. Uh, they've got a general multivitamin. They've got a sleep supplement that my husband takes every night. It works like a charm. They've got one for focus. You've got to go there and try it. I take the multivitamin every day. My son uses it. The whole family loves it. It's at HealthyCell.com slash news. Use code news for 20% off your first order over at HealthyCell.com slash news. I am joined today. By Jakub Williams, host of The Bottom Line and Blaze TV contributor, also my twinsie today. We did yep. not plan it. It's well, just really cold in the studio. Was not planned, <laughs> but I love the. You look great in it. Thanks. Uh, also, it, you look better in it. Also joined by John Doyle, Blaze TV contributor and host of Heck Off Commie, which also, uh, he is also, he's wearing like a much cooler. Very festive today, even though I was excluded, which, ow, but I mean, I'm glad that I could be the festive uh, representation. I, it, for those of you who are listening on the audio podcast, he's wearing this like really badass sweater with skulls on is it. it. Is that how you describe it? It's badass. It's like really cool. It's like something you'd wear out to like it's, it's, meet women and make friends. It's just funny because you don't generally characterize sweaters as badass. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But this one is. It's a sweater Thank that you. goes under a black leather jacket on, right. on the back of an Indian motorcycle. And I, you know, something like that. Thank you. See, I didn't say Harley. <laughs> I said Indian. Um, so I want to talk about all things Twitter. So last night, Elon Musk, we talked about it on the program yesterday. It wasn't a done deal yet. He officially closed the deal with Twitter for $44 billion and immediately upon taking control of the company, fired the CEO, the CFO, the company's general counsel and the top lawyer. Uh, this is Vijay Gaudi. Gaudi played a key role in the decisions to ban Donald Trump and suppress news articles about Hunter Biden's laptop. And uh, Politico reported earlier this year that after news broke in April that Musk would be buying the platform, Gotti cried during a meeting as she expressed concerns about how the company could change. Elon Musk tweeted, when the deal went through, the bird is freed. And uh, he's reportedly planning to lift all current lifetime bans and do away with the policy of imposing lifetime bans on people who violate the platform's policies. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't get John Doyle's thoughts on this because this is yep. a big day for you, John yep. Doyle, previously lifetime banned from Twitter, John Doyle. I, I literally feel like a kid on Christmas morning. It's it, This is such a, a sense of joy for me because I honestly, it kind of sucked the last two years being out of the mainstream conversation. I was I was literally like the guy in the corner at, at prom and I'm sitting there with my solo cup and watching you having a great time on Twitter, <laughs> you having a great time on Twitter. Everyone, I can't engage, I can't interact or anything like that. And it really is important. Like I remember when I got banned, people were like, oh, just go to Parler. Oh, you don't need to be on there. It's run by SJWs anyway. And it's like, that's great, but you still have your account. Like it actually is extraordinarily important. And I think Elon recognized that, which is why he went through with this and not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I've been trusting Elon's plan since day one. People said I was crazy. He's going to come through for us. And I even heard that when he fired the CEO, he first asked him, the CEO asked Elon, like, oh, and what's the plan for transition? And apparently Elon said to him, yesterday and then he got fired and that was it and that just makes me so happy because these people <laughs> wanted to like play police and, and play god with who gets to say what and they've done it for so long and people are fed up with it and elon is literally the only solution that we could have had i mean the pusillanimous leadership that we have in the gop never would have done anything to no. restore free speech rights no. to the people who vote for them and make them so much money and give them so much power it literally could have only been this autistic billionaire who thought it would be cool to like restore free speech on twitter it's really the only time culture shifts is when the people within the corporate sector and then combined with the faith sector, with the church, right? And that blows up the whole separation of church and state nonsense. Combined together to say we're going to take power back. It's never going to be government. Government will not solve a single major problem. Definitely not the GOP. None of them will. It's going to be things like this. And I have other people in my world 
like an Elon, where in their sectors they go, listen, our company is now at a place like Patriot Mobile. Mm -hmm. What Glenn and his team's doing at Patriot Mobile, they are swinging a Louisville slugger, man, and they are winning because they're taking the power of the dollar, people's commercial buying power, their, 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 the vote with their dollar concept, and they're making change. And so I think this may just be the start of more people like Elon, and there are others like him that will step up and go, okay, if we swing this way, we're not going to die. Um, and I love, I don't know if we can go there yet, but I love the headline that's coming next. I, I love the fact that he's not just talking about buying the company, but really radically moving it. So, so before we get there, um, I just want to, uh, to, I don't know if you guys saw, I forget the, the outlet that did it, but there was an outlet that put a live feed up outside of Twitter headquarters and it was, it was being streamed on, tw on Twitter really? and it was like live outside Twitter HQ after Elon Musk takes over. And it was just literally the outside of a building with people walking past. And I'm like, Did, are, were, were you expecting riots? It's like not I'm not quite, it up. Right, like I'm not quite yeah. sure what we're looking for here. I'm just looking at a building uh, on a street corner with normal passersby. So I don't really know what the big deal is here. Um, I also want to add Elon. Uh, so we're obviously taping this a little bit early today. So four minutes ago, uh, Elon just tweeted out, Twitter will be forming a content moderation council with widely diverse viewpoints. No major content decisions or account reinstatements will happen before that council convenes. So moving forward, what he's saying is that you, we're not just going to have a bunch of leftists who get together and say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to suppress conservatives. This is going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of differing opinions and people perhaps fighting back and pushing back, um, which I think is fair. I think that that's fair. Look, uh, you have to moderate. You can't just be well, free right. form nothing. Which because is what then he the has pedophiles said. will run wild. Which is what he yeah, has said exactly. the whole time. He's like, yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah, exactly. It's it's going to be a horrible place with a bunch of you yeah. know th uh, terroristic threats and exactly. all of this. But also, you know, Sarah Gonzalez on Twitter saying yes. uh, transgenderism is a mental illness is not. Going to be censored. Right. Like, that's not a violent because, type no. of, you know, it's not, it's not, that's not harming anyone. That's not hurting anyone. And it's anyone. your first, first amendment right. And it's also your, your, yesterday, I feel like we've been walking in this time warp where if you're a thinker, they go, thinker, thinker, yeah. thinker, For like sure. the island, the movie, sure. right? And now it's like, no, you can think. Mm -hmm. You can have your own opinion. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be censored for it. And yeah. by the way, if you're a, a crazy leftist who's uh, worried about someone else's opinion because you're, you're thinking that someone else's opinion can actually harm you, then perhaps you should just stay, stay off of Twitter yeah. and go somewhere else. Like John would say, hey, go to Parlor. Yeah, go to Parlor. Go to <laughs> owned by what Kanye West now. Yeah, go go for or like go form your own. This is what they told go us, form right? Your own. Why don't you? If yeah. you don't like it, why don't you go start your own social yeah. media? Okay, why don't you guys go do that? You're your more than welcome to do that. Your parallel economy. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what you told us so often was that if you didn't like these rules and how they were being applied only to conservatives and only conservatives were being punished, go form your own. See how that works out for you. Uh, Twitter will be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange on November yeah. 8th. It, uh, also, this new filing with the SEC indicated that the merger between Twitter and Musk's subsidiary X Holdings 2, Inc., was complete. And uh, Twitter's stock was trading, um, you know, as of the I, I don't have the exact one, but earlier this morning, 53.70, which was slightly lower than his buying price of 54.20. So it is going to be delisted, completely private company. But that's, that's what has to happen. Yes. Because you can't say we're going to keep Twitter in the hands of Wall Street. I own it, but it's still in the hands of Wall Street. The claws, the tentacles of Satan is mm -hmm. still in there. No. Take it, completely take it private again. Really, to really clean it up, John, that had to happen. I yep. agree. And, and the people, too, I saw a handful of uh, conservatives who were taking the Musk statements about it's not going to be a free-for-all. And they were like, see, this was a total plan. He's not. And it's like, he, OK, first of all, he has to say that. Like, he has mm -hmm. to say that. And also, just use your brain. Like, he's not talking about, you know, censoring Sarah Gonzalez for saying that, like, men can't actually give birth. He's talking about the violence. Right. He's talking about the yep. pornography, yep. the pedophilia. 
And the left understands this very well, that this is only on the net a win for us. They are mm-hmm. losing ground. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And conservatives yes. are like, no, he's going to like be mean to us, too. It's like, you can only win in this situation. Yeah. You will only be allowed to say more. Accounts will come back. Maybe not Trump, maybe Trump. But even then, I mean, you have dozens and dozens and dozens of very prominent people who were kicked off your humble narrator included, who will now be allowed to re-enter the conversation and influence those in the middle people. And the leftists are going to see the it, which is honestly the most satisfying part. So it brings balance back. It brings equilibrium to the social conversation. That's what it's going to do. You have to have parameters. You have to have framework. You can't play football without sidelines. And so for the if people in the GOP, even it goes, we want no sidelines. No, you're an anarchist. Now you are an anarchist. You can't live life that way. You have to, because children will suffer. He'll have child porn all over the place, and who wants that? But he's going to bring balance back to the conversation where your opinion is going to counterbalance Joy Behar's opinion, and all of a sudden, the person that's just strolling through Twitter is now going to get, you know, truth. The option to look at truth and not just be in an echo chamber, and that has to happen. And hopefully, hopefully for me, it also cleans up some of the mess around the social networks and all the other pop-ups and all the other things, you know, to where we just get back to living our lives and and, uh, focusing on truth. So um, Taylor Lorenz, speaking of the uh, leftists who are just, you know, up in arms about it, Taylor Lorenz from the uh, Washington Post tweeted out, it's like the gates of hell opened on this site tonight. Oh, no. She can't take it. Again, Taylor, you're welcome to go uh, go acquire or, I don't know, build your own social media company and see how that works out for you. Uh, Donald Trump, John mentioned Trump earlier. Donald Trump responded uh, to this news with a post on Truth Social writing, Truth Social has become somewhat of a phenomena. Last week it had bigger numbers than all other platforms, including TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and the rest. It also looks and works better to my eye. I'm very happy that Twitter is now in sane hands and will no longer be run by radical left lunatics and maniacs that truly hate our country. Twitter must now work hard to rid itself of all the bots and fake accounts that have hurt it so badly. It will be much smaller, but better. I love truth in all caps with an exclamation point. Does he come back to Twitter? I feel like in a long enough timeline, he will and he has to. He has to. He's got an he's ego trying, thing. He's yeah. got the business conflict of interest. Yes. And, you know, I he's love, trying really hard like, to be like, no, I'm, I'm only on truth. You can only find yeah, me there. That's but but work. Trump will gravitate towards whichever spotlight is welcoming him that is the largest. And, I mean, if Twitter lets him back, Twitter lets him back. And the reason he was banned wasn't even, like, I mean, he incited violence. Because that even plays into the whole insurrection narrative, which isn't even true. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he will. And especially, ooh, imagine if that happened ahead of midterms. Imagine the Trump live tweeting midterm results. That would be very good. I just want the polls to be closed before he starts doing that. Okay. I don't want it to influence anyone. We need this one, John. We need this one. You think Trump is off-putting? I think, not to me, Trump is off-putting enough to have us lose the election to freaking Joe Biden. Yes. Well, other than all of the, but, well, you know, we the just, fortification right, of it. Right now, we just, don't need, we just don't need any nonsense before Tuesday. Let the left be the crazies that's, that's doing silly stuff. We need to stay the course, show up, and vote, vote, vote. Please show up and vote before Tuesday. Today to, or November 8th. November not, 8th. Oh, not next uh, Tuesday. A number of Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. November 8th. Um, all right. So I want to, um, you know what, really quickly... Let's get to uh, yesterday, Project Veritas released a leaked document showing the FBI, speaking of the election, the FBI will be targeting misinformation under election crimes. So this document defines misinformation as, quote, false or misleading information spread mistakenly or unintentionally, end quote. So even if you accidentally do it, they're looking to target. I don't know. Wow. It's almost like they're uh, trying to uh, meddle in the midterms, but... Democrats don't do that. The FBI doesn't do that. It's just crazy Republicans who do that, of course. Um, all right, we've got to uh, we got to take a quick break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bank on Yourself. So, if you have a 401k or an IRA or something similar, you may not realize this. You don't actually control your retirement plan, the government controls it. And Bank on Yourself is a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. They've never had a losing year in over 160 years. Uh, I like that record. And with Bank on Yourself, you're going to get tax-free retirement income. Under current tax law, your tax rate will be zero in retirement, which protects you from 
the incoming tax tsunami, especially if the left is in control. Plus, you're in control and can access your money for any purpose with no questions asked without all of the government penalties and restrictions that apply to things like IRAs and 401ks. You're getting built-in inflation protection. Your money is guaranteed to grow by a larger dollar amount every single year in both good times and bad. I don't have to tell you. Now is the bad times. So you need to make sure that you don't sleep on this. Go get the free report. It's going to give you all the details on how this strategy adds guarantees, predictability, and control to your financial plan. When you go to bankonyourself.com slash matters, do not let your retirement plan dwindle without going to bankonyourself.com slash matters. Oh, good old Joe Biden. Yesterday, he claimed that the... Um, price of gas was $5 when he took office. Watch. And because of the action we've taken, gas prices are declining. We're down $1.25 since the peak at this summer, and they've been falling for the last three weeks as well, as well, and adding up real savings for families. Today, the most common price of gas in America is $3.39, down from over $5 when I took office. Mm. Down from over five dollars from when I took office. It's interesting. Interesting math because um, gas was actually two dollars and thirty nine cents when Joe Biden took office. So. Remember, I sat in that chair, and our amazing director Stephen pulled up the graphic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The day he took office, and then it spiked just mm -hmm. because it was him at two thirty, on average. Some places even a little bit lower. So they'll say whatever, man. I'm telling you, these people will lie, cheat, steal. They'll do anything. Yeah. Um, you know, with him, I was having this conversation with my husband last night. With him, you never, I'm like, was this just a, like, oopsie dementia gaffe? Or is he just blatantly, willfully lying to the American public because he thinks that they'll believe him? They're probably giving him that information mm -hmm. and these like staffers know that they're lying and they're giving it to him because he doesn't really care and uh yeah like joe biden isn't actually making any decisions and like people say that but that is actually true like that's not just us insulting him that is actually a fact you you can't actually be an honest person and think mm -hmm. that he's sitting there you know in the oval office really just uh, i'm really troubled with this decision what should i do like he's just getting information from these like millennial staffers who drank their way through george washington university and they're just lying about this and then he just says that and then we have to talk about it but you still have all these mindless npc democrats who are going to be like so true and then go vote for him anyways and even the only reason that it's going down is because he's digging uh digging into the strategic oil reserves and he's yeah. like using that to artificially right. lower the, the yeah. gas prices. Yeah. He, has not, he has not resolved the problem with Saudi Aramco and OPEC. I can tell you that much. Uh, he's not resolved that problem. They don't want him in office. Nobody it, it, internationally. This is how bad it has become. When the international market starts moving against Joe Biden, because they are now even being hurt by the stupidity of the decisions we're making, but I'm with you. He doesn't make any decision, and you're right. It, uh, it's these George Washington, you know, poli-sci students that have worked their way through, but they're led by somebody. The problem is they've been led by Barack Obama and Rice. That's who's running the White House. It's, this is another Obama term, and they've, just, they've got all these youngsters in there, and I agree with you. They're telling him what to say. He's out of touch. When last did he pump gas at a gas pump? When last did he... When he was saying flying coach, mm -hmm. we said mm -hmm. yesterday on the airplane, mm -hmm. he hasn't. Right. So they can tell him, listen, they make you pay for these six inches of leg room, mm -hmm. and they don't tell you until you walk on the plane. It's atrocious. It's all Donald Trump. Right. Right. And the gas price was $5. Joe, you're winning. Mm -hmm. You're winning. Just tell him. Um, well, he also said yesterday that the record increase in food prices, look, they're not a big deal because people can, you can just go buy a different type of raisin bran, according to a middle class Joe over here. Watch. And by the way, the food prices, the main driver of food prices is not the price of beef and eggs, etc. Well, they're up. It's packaged goods, packaged goods. You're going to see people not buying Kellogg's uh, raisin bran, which you're going to see them buy another raisin bran, which is going to be a dollar cheaper. I mean, so what's happening is there is real <laughs> movement. Oh, what in the good. world? Thank God. Just buy the generic brands, guys. It, you'll be fine.
You'll be, cause those aren't up too. Or just eat bugs. Yeah. Well, the, they'll probably be. Look, if you live in a market of capitalism, no bugs the, are organic. They're gonna extra charge you for the bugs. The, well, that's what I was gonna say. Like all of the all of the bug harvesters. I don't know what you you're call gonna them. They're going to be like, like, yeah, we're up charging now if you're going to eat our bugs. These yoga moms in 20 years are going to be like, oh, my son can't eat highly processed bugs. He needs the organic <laughs> bugs that were grass-fed or whatever the bug equivalent would be. Yeah. yeah. So can we, can we just for a second, Sarah, have a, I'm going to ask you a question for a change, okay? If, if this was not your president, and this is a president from another nation, and it's a strong nation. And you would look at the conversation points, even if it's scripted and if it's given to him, John, what he is talking about is, is so, ir the manner that he's going about it is so irrelevant to the big picture. It, it's so non-solution driven that he literally has become a puppet. He's just spewing whatever. He's just sound bites. He's just filling time. He's an oxygen thief at this point. He's just standing there going, I'm here. And I'll say, it's kind of like Tom Brady used to be at a press conference after a game. You can ask me questions, but I'm not going to answer anything. You know, mm -hmm. this is Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. He's the leader of the free world. And America is still, some are still on the eighth going to vote for this party. Mm -hmm. it, it, it concerns me for the mental condition of America. Like we have a lot of mentally very unstable people. Yeah. Um, well, I look there. I have more Joe Biden clips to play if you can tolerate them. Are okay. they better than that one? Please. To, uh, define better. Like, what does better mean Play at this point all. with Joe Play Biden? All, uh, so Biden claimed up, uh, claimed that he gave up a starting position on the U Delaware football team <laughs> to visit his first wife every weekend. Uh, but um, back in 2009, Joe Biden said he left the team because he had a 1.9 GPA. But who knows? Maybe. I don't know which one it was. Listen. But my, uh, you know, I, I, I married a, a beautiful woman from Scanning Atlas Lake, was at Syracuse. I met her on spring break and fell head over heels in love with her and uh, gave up a starting job on the football team in Delaware to come up uh, uh, every weekend. Do they let you play, this is an honest question, do they let you play football on the college football team if you have a 1.9 GPA? No, you're not gonna play. <laughs> you're not playing at all. Trust me, you're not playing at all. But can you imagine? If he played a little more football and he actually got hit in the head, how bad it would have been? Praise God he didn't play football. <laughs> as bad as it is now. And he had, what if he took an CTE? extra couple of concussions? Yeah. <laughs> so really, that would have been seriously bad. So I'm glad he quit the football team. He just, like, he <laughs> lies every single time. All every of it. time he tells a story All of it. about his life, yeah. it's just a complete lie and a complete contradiction from something that he has said previously. And they called Trump a liar. Imagine how nice it must be to work in politics and just be able to say whatever you want because the media is going to run defense for you and mm -hmm. even promote it. Whereas anytime we say something, if it's even a sliver yes. off or if it's just off from the narrative, let alone factually inaccurate, then I'm um, actually, I'm um, actually, and then they censor, delete your account, you're banned, you're blacklisted, we've given you a 12 hour suspension or whatever. It, it just must be nice to be able to get up there and just like say whatever you want. And then also be preaching to a certain demographic in the population who are just going to vote for you regardless of what you say. Right. Because they're just so offended yep. by the Republican Party. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. I mean, God. It, That's it's why funny I said because. It's a mental illness. Well, I constantly am like, you know, Democrats think America is dumb. And then I'm like, mm, there's a lot of them who are dumb. Like, there's a lot of people out, not, not you if you're watching this program, not you guys. But it's like, well, Democrats think that because it's true and it works. So what does that tell you? There is an interesting contradiction where the country has never been farther left in its history. Yeah. But the left has never hated the country more than as they do now, whereas the right has seen the country become so backwards and terrible, frankly, and yet they still kind of cling to this sort of like George W. Bush, you know, uh, pickup truck with the flag mounted kind of patriotism. It's a really interesting dynamic mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got to uh, take a quick break. We'll be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Upside. So, um, Upside is, is, is like really cool. Upside is an app. You go, you download it from the app store on your phone. It's called Upside. And you use it when you, you know, you go buy gas, you go buy groceries, you go to a restaurant, you go out to eat. Times are tough right now. So what Upside is going to do is it's going to show you the places in your area where you can earn cash back. And so 
Everyone is doing these things. You got to go buy gas. You got to go buy groceries. And uh, every once in a while, you might want to take your family out to a restaurant if you can afford it in Joe Biden's economy. But with Upside, um, you're going to get cash back on every purchase that you would purchase, even if you were not using the app. So use it. Take advantage of it. Um, this cash back will just keep, you know, you keep getting it, keep building it, keep building it. And then you can redeem it for all sorts of really cool stuff. And uh, once you download it. You've got to uh, you got to use promo code news and you will get a deal. Uh, and it is uh, what's the deal? Here we go. It's hard to say. You're going to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. That's why I said make make sure I say it yeah. right. Five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. So you got to use promo code news once you download the app. But this is a no brainer, guys. You're going to earn money back for buying things you were already going to buy. Download the app. Use promo code NEWS. Disney's new short film, Reflect, promotes body positivity through the main character, Bianca. This is its first plus-sized heroine. The film started streaming on Disney Plus last month, and in the opening scene, Bianca is in an empty dance studio, confidently practicing by herself before class starts, and others walk into the room. She then becomes uncomfortable because she's the only one who's plus-sized, but eventually learns to accept her body. Uh, the title, Reflect comes from her seeing her reflection in the mirrors and reconciling how she looks with how she feels. And the director said, when people watch the short, I hope they can feel more positively about themselves and how they look and feel okay about the tough parts of the journey. So I actually, this is this is trending right now, mm -hmm. I, like a big deal. I would have, I, personally, mm -hmm. I would like to, I would have to see it Mm -hmm. before I would judge it. Because I yes. do think that there is something to be said about teaching young children Absolutely. to love themselves for who they are. Absolutely. If it goes so far as to say, like, obesity is okay and living unhealthy is actually a great thing, I got another problem with that. Um, but, you know, when you say something like feel okay about the tough parts of the journey, the journey would insinuate to me that, like, you understand that you need to get to a new goal, mm -hmm. which is being healthy. If they did that, though, they would be called fat phobic and it would be instantly shut down. I well, don't that's think why Disney that, would do that. I actually am shocked that the director made that statement because the director yeah. literally said uh, she wants them to feel more positively about themselves and how they look and feel OK about the tough parts of the journey. I don't think she meant to say it. I think I think the journey means like the journey of life, like the same way they, it's a mm. journey to have your gender affirmed by mutilation. Like that's, I think, yes. what they're talking yes. about there. Yes. And I'm so for representation in the sense that like if you were disfigured in a horrible accident or a war, like I think that you should feel OK in your body and people are like they should not look down upon you or treat you badly. But if the way you look is within your control and you are coming to terms with it, like you're coming to terms with yourself in a form that is not ideal. It's not like this happened. You have no control over it. You should come to terms with that. And also it's unhealthy. Like what you're doing is killing yourself. I think what is the leading cause of death in this country is like heart disease or at least things that are caused by lifestyle factors. And mm -hmm. it's because we're eating things. And we discussed this during the break that our bodies were not designed to digest. Mm -hmm. And you know, a good rule of thumb that's uh, I think I, I heard yesterday was if you're in a grocery store and you stay on the outskirts of it, you will be okay. But when you start getting yep. in the aisles, yep. then you start to get into trouble. But the yep. produce, the dairy, the eggs, things, all the stuff that they said was so bad mm -hmm. for you is actually like really good for you. And I would just like also, I, I agree with everything you just said there. It's just when it's a kid, it's like, well, the kid doesn't have any control over what their parents are feeding them. Exactly. And oftentimes it's the, it's the parent's fault. Yeah. It's not yeah. the kid's fault. It's the parent's fault for feeding them freaking processed junk all the time. And then the kid becomes overweight and then the kid has a problem with the way that they look. Yeah, look, I think we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. We're created by God. We need to learn to love ourselves in the true sense because love others as you love your neighbor as you love yourself. However, we have to also, within the narrative, encourage people to be the best version of themselves. We have different body types. The NFL lineman today, by mm -hmm. just dieting, is not going to become a wide receiver. He's more dense. He's got heavier, heavier skeletal structure, more muscle mass, etc. So it's about to being the best version of yourself, and that has to be encouraged. My caution with this short, Sarah, is this. At a time when Disney is pushing completely indoctrinating children. Mm -hmm. They're now releasing this short. So I'd say I'd have to see it as well. Right. Because who's behind it, I don't trust. Correct. Now, the director, understandably we so, may very well 
yeah. want to portray, hey, love yourself. Don't let kids bully you. Mm -hmm. But it's still Disney behind right, the director. Right, right. So I don't trust the organization mm -hmm. that has produced this. The director very, very well may have good intentions. So I'd have to watch it. Uh, but, I'm, uh, but I'm with you. We, we don't want to promote obesity. But we also don't want to promote, listen, it, it, there's one the body kids. type in America and every girl's got to be a Barbie doll, right? Mm -hmm. And she's got to have a, you know, size, you know, size zero waist and, you know, fitness too. No, we're all different, but we have to aspire to be the best versions of ourselves because that's actually a biblical commandment. Take care of the temple mm -hmm. and your body yeah, is they're a temple. promoting gluttony. And yes. to Sarah's earlier point, if you allow your child to develop those eating habits, there, it's like a life sentence. I mean, it's yes. going to be so extraordinarily difficult for them to break that. It's and yep. once they get to the point where they start to go through puberty and, you know, they start liking boys or liking girls, they're going to start to notice that, like, people are vicious to them. And, mm -hmm. and they're going to be very alienated because people aren't going to, you know, write them little love notes or whatever because it's just the reality of the situation. I have a younger family member who her whole life has always been, you know, chubby and then obese because her parents just would not do anything about it. And they allowed this to happen. And now these kids feel so much hurt. And it's such a sensitive subject. If it's even brought up, they will immediately like be reduced to tears because they are so insecure in their image. But then they project that forward. It's not my problem with my body. It's whoever tells me that there is a problem. That's why I feel this way. And mm. it's so disordered and so wrong. And I would hope that this has a positive message, but I feel like it's just going to feed more into that. Yeah, especially how we've seen Disney just Disney, like all leftist activists, they've they do it on a slow, it's a slow, mm. incremental, methodical shift into exactly where they want to get culture. They don't start out right where they want to go. But, but Sarah, think about it. Again, even if their intentions were good, the focus is still on the aesthetics, the body, the body versus yeah. our problem with culture right, is right. character Moral, and yeah. morals, yep, yep. you know, and, and work ethic yep. and contribution to society. These are the things we should be celebrating and right. focusing on right now. So go make a short about, you know, work ethic yeah. or about accountability. Yep. Teach kids accountability and work ethic. No, but Disney will just go to the aesthetics again. Mm -hmm. So I don't trust them. But let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll watch the short. So, so sp on this particular topic, um, Taylor Swift uh, edited a video for one of her new songs after she was accused of fat phobia over a scene with a bathroom scale. This is the song Anti-Hero, and it shows her weighing herself on a scale. And the display, when you look at the, the weight display, it just says fat. And so fat activists were very mad that Taylor Swift would dare to put this in her video. So she actually edited the whole freaking video to remove that scene. And by the way, for context, she has, I don't like her at all, um, but she's been very open about her struggle with an eating disorder. So it was supposed to allude to that in the scene. And now she can't even reference, I guess, her past life without fat activists you know, uh, making her edit this. I just think it's so stupid that there is a thing called fat activists. Why are they getting a free pass from like the, you know, extinction rebellion people, fat people? They're burning more gasoline. They consume more resources, more fabric for their clothes. They're farting more. It's methane. Like, why are they getting a free pass? Why don't they get criticized? Maybe, and maybe they could use it, you know, that extra motivation. What if instead of just like ruining the economy with the Green New Deal, you just gave every person with a BMI over 30 a free gym membership? Or like a fat tax? <laughs> fat I'm tax. just spitballing. I don't You're know. You're talking about fat tax. I'll tell you Listen. one thing that's a problem is when you can't sit in your airplane seat. Yeah. Okay. Start buying two tickets, buddy. Our good friend Sydney Watson just recently experienced T that. Yeah. yeah. Buy, no, I've, I stood a whole flight. Look, I'm six, two and a half, two, ten, two, twelve. Okay. I stood a whole flight because there was no room. Now, I, gotta I paid for my ticket too. So come on, American, refund me. You know, or you know, I, the fat tax is not a bad idea for a minute here. So in some occasions, you want to go get on an airplane and now, you know, what about that person next to you? Buy two seats, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I look, I'm not a big fan of like taxing people's lifestyles. However, I do think there could be an argument to be made for, you know, especially now that the Democrats have tried to shift us into this, you know, we're all sharing uh, costs in this healthcare system. So if that's the case, like if you are, utilizing more resources within the healthcare system because you have chosen a life of unhealthiness, why should I be forced to pay for your healthcare costs? And even so, I mean, what is the government's job if not to protect our rights? Things like life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, 
they have to protect life and also the pursuit of happiness. You know, my autonomy is violated when I walk through public and I see these big people. It makes me upset. I want Americans to be beautiful. Oh and so God. they need to be taxed. He had to go there. He had this to go is there. why he's don't, not a dad yet. Don't send me hate mail over no, that. I didn't why. say it. All no. right? I'm concerned about your health. Yes. We are, that John. was all John. And you can't send him hate mail yet on Twitter because he's not back, but he will True. be soon. All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're disallowed from buying your girls Barbie dolls, okay? <laughs> I don't want a bunch of Barbie girls coming from you. I Remember want real, the, real people with real personalities. Remember the Bratz dolls? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My mom hated them. The European Union's drug regulator is recommending adding uh, as a side effect to both Pfizer and Moderna's COVID-19 vaccines heavy menstrual bleeding. This is according to an advisory panel meeting. It defines heavy menstrual bleeding or heavy periods as bleeding characterized by more volume or duration that, quote, interferes with the person's physical, social, emotional, and material quality of life, end quote, noting that cases of heavy menstrual bleeding have been reported after the first, second, and booster doses of Cominardi and Spike Vax. They said that it found no evidence showing that COVID-19 vaccine-linked menstrual disorders impacted fertility or reproduction. Because remember, that's going to be the next report that comes out that they show you because there were said that no heavy menstrual bleeding was not a side effect of this before uh two years ago one year ago i got the entire blaze tv channel demonetized because i read a freaking study indicating that it was a problem yeah. for women's menstrual cycles so all of a sudden now it is actually the, the vaccine, and it is a side effect of it, and they are going to add it. But don't worry, it doesn't have effect on any of those other bigger things until it does next year when they finally tell you and you've already been sterilized. Yeah, but look, biology is biology. So this is a, a crock of crap. A heavier menstrual cycle is going to result in the following, which we now also know, higher cases of endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And endo, now you got serious issues. Yeah. Now you are talking about fertility and the ability to have children and the ability to function. For any woman out there that has endo, you know you can't walk. You're laying in the fetal position on the ground. And so good luck thinking this is not going to affect, again, birth rate mm -hmm. and function of life and be able to. And so, so it's already there. They'll release it later because right. of potential lawsuits coming out. But we now, we know the, the, the cases in endo has spiked all across the world. Yeah, I can't even think of an ailment that isn't also being caused by this thing. Like everything that you can think of that even mm -hmm. people were, were predicting back then, along with what they said, oh, you might have like, you know, shortness of breath or just something mild like that. It's like all there under mm -hmm. its, its resume now. And I just, I hope people are happy with their decisions. Because it seems like every week now, every few days now, we're seeing a story of some, like, 14-year-old kid who's in his band class or something. Or what was it? He was singing a choir solo. Mm -hmm. He just collapses. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about totally athlete's normal. heart syndrome. Mm -hmm. Pro athletes falling over. I've got a video, which I want to release somewhere, that, that people cut together. It was banned about just on, in pro sport in the middle of games. Premier League soccer. Players dropping mm -hmm. over. And they just... They just take the footage and just don't show it, right? This is, this is so bad. And again, we said it early in, in, in the whole vaccine conversation. We won't know the ramifications of these vaccines truly, maybe for decades. Well, this is why I kept, and again, this is the European uh, drug regulators. This is not the United States because we've decided to take uh, some, somehow, I don't know, We've decided to take all of this and go to the furthest extreme position, whereas uh, European countries are like, don't give this to kids, yeah. right? We, let, let's add the appropriate disclaimers. No, over here in the United States, we're like, give it to kids. Give it to six-month-olds. It's totally fine. Give them the booster. Everything's fine. It's like, it's so mm -hmm. crazy to me. But we said this at the beginning. We said, if you want to get it, if you have, have done your you know, uh, risk assessment and you think that it makes sense for you to get, fine. Just know you are the test subject, okay? Yep. You are the study. You are the guinea pig. If you are fine assuming that risk, then good on you. But know that because there is no way that they have study results that mean anything with the way that our Operation Warp Speed worked. And again, I, I, I blame Trump for that, right? He had a lot of, there's a lot of blame to be shared. He, he has some culpability in that. Now, was he misled? Yes, I'm sure he was. But it's never a good idea to say, yes, you know what? 
we're going to totally take all of these other safety precautions that we have for all other vaccines uh, and just eliminate them and then trick the population into thinking that we already know that it's totally safe and effective. You can't do that. OK, you can't do that. And now we're seeing the end results of that. Um, I want to really quickly. I want to go to Paul Pelosi, who was uh, apparently violently assaulted, reportedly, in him and in his and Nancy's home earlier this morning. Apparently, the the attacker brought a hammer, entered the house through a sliding glass door and was he said he was looking for Nancy Pelosi. This is according to law enforcement. He said, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? And um, I I'm reading that the San Francisco Chronicle was uh, apparently identified him. So this is as of the time of this taping. This is this is the news on this, that they identified him as uh, David De, De Pap, a Berkeley resident. And apparently on a blog and website, he was fixated on censorship. He made anti-Semitic comments, uh, 42 years old, and was a former Castro nudist protester and a hemp jewelry maker. That sure sounds like a Republican to me. Mm, yeah. I'm sure it, I'm sure it was. The, the Californian kind. No, yeah, nothing about this makes any sort of sense. Yeah, no one actually cares about Nancy Pelosi. Like, they're just doing that to rile up, you know, oh, vote blue, vote, like those types of people. And, you know, if people on our side, which we never do because maybe we're uh, nice, we would not go after Nancy Pelosi. Like, no one cares about it. Maybe Sarah would, but I can attest. She was here the whole time. It would have been like, <laughs> you know, George Soros or somebody like that. Yeah, I mean, it, well, again, I, I would love for more details of this to come out because I'm, it, that seems very sketch to me. Why, the sliding glass door was just easily accessible. He just opened it and slid right in. Look, we know that a lot of these politicians, particularly the high-profile ones, have security details. Uh, even yeah. even Alex Steinway is outside Lori Lightfoot's house, this, and she's just a mayor. There's security details. So there's a lot of questions to be asked here. Was there security? How do you just walk in? Uh, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think we need to sit on this one for a minute and kind of see how this cookie crumbles. Yeah. Uh, the timing of it is peculiar. It, again, I mean, yeah. I, I just, I want it all to make sense. But, yeah. uh, I mean, look, if, it, if, if this is... That's that's what happened. That's what's being reported as what happened. And left, right, center, whatever. Um, violence is never the answer. No. I'd like to say that right now. Violence is never the answer. Yeah. It, I, I just want all of the details in this to make sense. And I don't trust the mainstream media to give it to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be on the lookout for more details uh, over the weekend. And of course, we will report back here on Monday. For now, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Like, does he have... Yesterday, an Arizona Fox News affiliate posted the results of the Arizona gubernatorial election days before polls have even opened. Uh, Representative Paul Gosar drew attention to it on Twitter, writing, Hey, Fox 10, what's with the fake election graphic that got Hobbs over Kerry Lake? Is this the same Fox News that called Arizona for Biden five minutes after the polls closed? Because, of course, the results show uh, Katie Hobbs at 53 percent and Kerry Lake at 47 percent. Really weird. Fox sent out an apology and said it was posted in error, of course, writing, at 5.50 p.m. during the Fox 10 newscast today, a small graphic appeared on the lower left side of the screen showing test results for the upcoming election. These were generated by the Associated Press, and uh, the numbers were only part of a test. The station has taken steps to make sure this cannot happen again. I'm sure that's exactly as they say. These local stations we found in Indianapolis and Dallas, these local Fox stations, do not for a second think, because the word Fox is affiliated to these local mm -hmm. stations, that they have not been absolutely infiltrated by the left at the news desk level, and especially the editor-in-chief. I have found that almost all of the, of the, what we would consider conservative news stations, other than The Blaze, at the editor level, mm -hmm. they're liberals. Yeah. Also, my limited experience in like production rooms, there's like the thing and you hit the button and then the test thing goes on what's being showed. And they would never experiment with a graphic on that while it's being live anyway. Right, yeah, it didn't make any sense. By the way, uh, for reference, that was Fox 10 was Carrie Lake's old station. Interesting. Mm.